Okay, in this next part, we're going to um, discuss system monitoring commands. Basically, the commands down in the last two lines of, um, of this blurb here. Um, the first set of commands are sort of static monitoring commands, commands you run every now and then to determine various things on your system, like the du command. If you recall, and we've been over these commands before, or if not here, then in your Unix class, the du command can give you information about like um, how much space is being used by a, a directory that you're in or by a, uh, by a directory that you name. And not just by the directory itself, but by all of its ch child processes, everything under it. That's a very valuable command. The df command is also very valuable. That tells you uh, how much space is being used by all of your mounted file systems. That will tell you um, um, and tell you how much space you have left on all of your mounted file systems. If you use it with the I option, in that case, it will tell you about the inode usage on all of your file systems. and um, uh, let you know when you're out of inodes, because you can run out of inodes and thus not be able to put more files on your disk, even though there is space available on the disk, but there's no room in the inode table. Um, the swap, minus, swap on minus s command will tell you about your swap space usage. Um, And um, that that can be useful. Um, actually, it doesn't tell you so much about your usage as it tells you about how your swap spaces are set up, where 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 you have swap spaces, and it allows you to find out whether you have swap space on some sort of a dog slow device, like you've set up swap space on a thumb drive that just runs really slow and thus ends up slowing down your whole system. The mount command will tell you, um, if, if not used with any options, tells you all the systems you have mounted. And um, thus, will you can examine this and find out if you have partitions that should be mounted that aren't mounted and things of that type. Of course, it does not tell you about any mounts that are not on your system that may be reachable by the network. But it's still a very useful command. And the nmap command, which we won't go into, um, tells you, um, uh, uh, scans your system for open ports, or scans other people's systems for open ports. It's a port scanner. And um, it can be used to check the security on your system to basically see if you have um, um, something like a web server running by accident that shouldn't be running. Because if you don't want to be running that and don't know you're running that, then it becomes a, um, a big security hole, because somebody can sneak in and do bad things, and you won't be aware of it. Now, the next line is the commands that are maybe more to the point uh, of this chapter. And there are commands for monitoring your CPU usage, how much CPU is being used by each process, your I.O. usage, things of that type. The first command I'm going to talk about is top, because it's probably the most popular one. Top is a command that if you type it in, and you don't really have to be root to run top. So we'll go over here. Um, uh, whoops. I just killed my uh, picture, but um, that's OK. Um, a X, A, W, OK, there we go. Um, all desktops, pull that down, and we'll do whoop, advanced. Keep on top of other, other things, um, other windows. Keep Make that the top window. OK. The top command. The top command is sort of a screen-driven type command, <coughs> or um, 
it displays just in an alpha display, but it's what's called cursors driven. So it can write things any place on your dis display. It doesn't have to write from top to bottom. And it updates itself every so often. By default, I think it's three seconds. And uh, tells you how much CPU is being used, um, tells you, gives you information about your swap space and memory space usage, and will actually tell you what processes are using uh, how much CPU. Here's a process called FFmpeg using 31% of the CPU. That is the process that is making this video, and it's apparently a hungry thing. Um, Xwindows, x.org process is using 16% of the CPU, um, and so on. Sometimes you'll find that it's uh, some process that's using way more than its fair share of memory. Um, and you can look at those with this. If you type H, that will bring up a help function, and there's various parameters you can set. You can make it show. Um, different things by selecting different fields by using the um, um, well, some of these flags down here. I'll let you play, read them and play with them. Uh, the one that is really useful is the minus s, though, or is the s command. So let's get back here. Let's type s. And this is the amount of time it takes to up uh, that it averages to update the screen. I often set that as high as, I usually set that about 30 seconds. I think three seconds is far, far too fast because um, you get variations of a system over three seconds. If you really want to see the long trend, time trends of a system, you want it to change slower than three seconds. And um, I think 30 seconds is good, because if the system is dog slow for 30 seconds, that means it's dog slow. Um, if it's dog slow for three seconds, but the process finishes, that makes it slow, oh, it's great the next three seconds. So um, I think three seconds is just too short a time average. Um, and I recommend setting it to at least 20 or even 30 seconds. Um, OK, this is what top's like. Um, there's a lot of options, a lot of variation in top. It's, pr it's, it's, it's probably it's a really useful command. OK, let's quit top by typing a Q. Um, there's a, another command, a variation of top, called htop. That seems to be a little bit prettier and gives um, different options. It's I have not used it very much because I I notice it's on some of the newer distributions, but I, it's not it is missing from a lot of Unix systems, so I really don't have that much experience with it. It looks to me like it gives you a lot of the same information that Top does, only maybe in a more readable format or at least more attractive to some people. Uh, and apparently, you use the F keys for um, you know, F9 for kill, F8 for this, for that. A actually, with both top or with htop, you can kill a process. Um, instead of using the kill command, you can kill a process by, by um, um, as an option to these commands. Um, I, I don't want to kill that, actually. So, OK, another command um, for doing much the same thing is called vmstat. The reason I'm going through a lot of these commands uh, is that many of these commands don't exist on every system um, and don't exist on maybe a Unix, but they do on a Linux, or they do on a Linux, and they don't. I, I, it, so it's nice to know about all of them, because you'll find, you should find one of these commands on any system you work on. Um, and the uh, uh, you may have, but if you're really stuck on your favorite command, you may have to install that yourself. VMstat, VMstat gives you a printout um, similar to top. 
only it doesn't break it down by user, so it's less useful. And you can average over a period of time. Let's average over 20 seconds. Well, let's average over 10 seconds. I would probably average over 30 seconds if this wasn't a video, but I want to have it iterate a couple times, and I just don't want to spend the time waiting. So the first hunk of data you get, you usually throw away, because it came back too fast. And then if you look at the hunks of data you get here, it breaks down your, it shows how much memory you're using, how much memory is free, how much memory is being used in buffers, how much is being used in cache, how much swapping you've got, how many processes are running at the moment. Um, tells you a lot about your CPU usage, about the whether it's I.O. or whether it's system CPU usage. Uh, whoop, I'm sorry, system CPU usage, idle time, so on and so forth. Um, I have worked on a lot of systems where you had VM stat and you did not have top. OK. Let's go out here and let's hit the last one that I want to talk about that also deals with the same sort of parameters, SAR. SAR is. A SAR was a very basic, very old system monitoring command. Um, and what it does is it has a billion options to it, and it lets you collect data that this is over a 20-second averaging time. And it is actually making a file called output, but it's also putting the file data out to the screen. and SAR actually collects a huge amount of information, even though right now it's only outputting a little bit of it that I can see. Um, and we will see it coming back here in just a moment. Um, there we come. And it gives us information about um, all of our CPUs, uh, the percentage CPU used by users, the percentage that is nice. The percentage uh, associated with the system usage, the percentage in I.O. time, um, and so on and so forth. And the truth is, if I use enough options on SAR, it gives me a lot of information. Notice it prints things top to bottom. Um, um, so it's not pretty. It, it, it's top to bottom. That is very useful because that is the sort of thing that you can redirect and collect in a file. Top, you've got to look at interactively. You can't just let it run for a day and then come back and analyze it. Top, you've got to be there. Uh, SAR, you, it, SAR is really designed so you can run it for a long period of time and analyze the data later. And so if you've got 100 systems and some of them are slowing down, you might run SAR on all of them, run it for a week to get kind of a feel for the systems. And then you take, and it, it gets collected, just like it's in a log file. Um, I think the option for that is minus R, I believe. Um, but you can read the man page as well as I can. and. Um, um, and then you analyze it at the end of the week. Um, and that can be done by, you know, uh, you don't actually have to be there. Well, as you can see here, the um, SAR command is a very long command. Oh, it's the minus F option, this guy. That will collect your data as binary data and um, keeps lots and lots of data for you. And then you can go back and use various SAR commands that actually read that data file and print it, prints it in nice little um, reports that you can use to draw information from. Um, OK. Um, other monitoring commands that we have are um, IO top, which, um, yeah, try it. Uh, I've never found it very useful. And IO stat, the first commands I gave you, the earlier commands really don't give you very much information about uh, disk usage. 
IOSTAT gives you a lot of information about disk usage. And um, I'll pick up 